uh, it was for Kevin Blanche. Hopefully, he can link this together with the last uh, the video I just shot here on the North Umpqua. As I said, you know, I'm a big student of uh, Zane Gray, or I guess a fan of Zane Gray, his fishing adventures um, in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I'm really basically have spent devoted my life to learning all the rivers and how to fish for steelhead and salmon. It's kind of curious, uh, a curious note, uh, Zane Gray had a cook called Takahashi. He wrote about him in a lot of his stories and if you read anything about his fish camp it was just downstream from here. Uh, Zane Gray did a lot of his writing in the, the early 20s and uh, hard to imagine he had a cook from Japan, I'm not sure what part of Japan, uh, named Takahashi. And uh, Zane Gray passed away, of course, about 1932, and World War II came along. And uh, Takahashi was rolled up by our government and uh, put in an intern camp during World War II because he was Japanese. You would think that uh, having Zane Gray's family vouch for him would be enough, but that is not true. So there you have it. And now we have uh, Fukushima, which is hard to imagine sitting here on this bridge, that uh, nuclear accident in Japan could devastate all the fisheries in the Pacific Northwest. Um, basically everything is extinct. Heading over to the Rogue River, there's only 125 steelhead uh, spring chinook in the Rogue. Uh, there's only 24 spring chinook in the Umpqua. And there's only a couple rivers in the world that have spring chinook. Uh, these two, the Umpqua, the Rogue River, the Willamette River, and the Columbia River. And that's it. Very finite and uh, very dead. Uh, hard to wrap your head around. I can see clear to the bottom here. There's no, uh, there are no salmon. Uh, 